Russian space chief Dmitry Rogozin recently said that Moscow and Beijing were very close to signing the agreement on creating the joint lunar station. In fact, China and Russia are leading the opposition to the US-led space bloc, called the Artemis Accords, consisting of 19 countries, which aims to send a manned mission to the moon by 2025 and establish a governing framework for exploring and mining for natural resources on moon, Mars, and beyond. The mission intends to build a research station on the moon's south pole with a supporting research station orbiting the moon, called the Lunar Gateway. At the same time, China and Russia are promoting their own International Lunar Research Station ILRS, as an alternative to the US-led Artemis program. This joint Sino-Russian mission aims to build a moon base and install a space station in the lunar orbit. The station is planned to be a state-of-art experimental research facility created on the surface or in the orbit of the moon. Besides, the new program will also include plans to support the development of the ground segment of the two countries' national satellite systems, Russia's GLONASS and China's Beidou Navigation Satellite System to be installed next year, as well as a slate of exciting projects Roscosmos and the China National Space Agency will work on in the coming decades as the two countries join forces to achieve new heights in the sphere of space exploration. In contrast with the U.S. lunar exploration project known as the Artemis Accords, which experts believe reveals its exclusive nature for mimicking a space-based NATO, China, and Russia's partnership stresses bringing advancement for all, with the vision of building a community with a shared future for mankind. Meanwhile, China and Russia are looking to add more nations to ILRS and there have been reports of negotiations with the ESA, Thailand, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia. So, what is the current progress of Sino-Russian cooperation? What new changes will it bring to the space race? Hi! Welcome to Hot Topics Time. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel. Okay, let's continue the topic we are talking about. In recent years, China has made huge advances in space exploration, putting its own astronauts in orbit and sending probes to the Moon and to Mars. It has effectively drafted Russia as a partner in missions that it has already planned, outpacing a Russian program that has stalled in recent years. The joint announcement by China and Russia has the potential to scramble the geopolitics of space exploration, once again setting up competing programs and goals for the scientific and, potentially, commercial exploitation of the moon. This time, though, the main players will be the United States and China, with Russia as a supporting player. Yes, for Russia, the agreement is a role reversal. The Soviet Union initially led the first space race in the mid-20th century before falling behind the United States, which put the first man on the moon in 1969, a feat the Soviets never managed. After the Soviet Union's collapse, Russia became an important partner in the development of the International Space Station. Now, let's take a look at the current progress of Sino-Russian cooperation. Last June, Roscosmos and China National Space Administration presented a roadmap for the ILRS during the Global Space Exploration Conference. According to the roadmap, Divided into three phases, five facilities and nine modules are planned for the station to support long and short missions to the moon's surface and orbit. The construction of the station is expected to be completed by 2035. These facilities include a cislunar transport facility to support round-trip transfer between Earth and the moon, lunar orbiting, soft landing, a takeoff on the lunar surface, and re-entry to Earth. On the surface, a long-term support facility will feature a command center, energy and supply modules, and thermal management. The Lunar Transport and Operation Facility will help modules move the surface and support excavation or sampling. The other two are the Lunar Scientific Facility for in-orbit and surface experiments and the Ground Support and Application Facility. As for the modules, the designs reportedly include a hopping robot and smart mini-rovers that would move around the moon's surface. The station is planned to be built in three phases, with the first phase involving six missions, including China's Chang'e 4, 6, 
and seven missions in Russia's Luna 25, 26, and 27. The first phase involves gathering data and verifying high-precision soft landings, which is supposed to last till 2025. The Chang'e 4 CE4 mission delivered a landing platform and a rover named Yutu 2 to the moon's far side in January 2019, marking the first soft landing on the far side of the moon by any country. Yutu 2 landed in von Karman crater in the moon's South Polaitkin basin in January 2019. The CE-4's purpose is to explore the area's geology. The CE-6 and CE-7 are expected to be launched around 2025. The CE-6 is supposed to bring back to Earth lunar samples with a mass of up to 2 kilograms, and CE-7 will be tasked with landing on the lunar south pole and detecting local natural resources. CE-7 is comprised of five separate spacecraft, namely an orbiter, lander, rover, hopping probe, and a polar relay satellite. Meanwhile, Russia also plans to launch its Luna 25 mission, thereby reactivating the Soviet-era series of robotic lunar missions that ended decades ago. The last in the series was Luna 24, which sent about 6 ounces, 170 grams, of moon material back to Earth in 1976. The Luna 25 moon probe will launch atop a Soyuz 2.1B rocket with a frigate upper stage from the Vostokny spaceport in the far eastern region of Amor. The probe's primary destination for landing is the moon's south polar region, specifically, a spot north of the Bogoslavsky crater. According to Russia's rocket design bureau, NPO Lavochkin has constructed the Luna 25's lander. There are three main tasks for this mission to develop soft landing technology, study the internal structure and exploration of natural resources, including water, in the circumpolar region of the moon, and investigate the effects of cosmic rays and electromagnetic radiation on the moon's surface. In addition, Luna 25 is also supposed to use a suite of sensors on board to study the lunar topside and dust particles in the moon's exosphere. Luna 25 also had a camera called Pilot D, a demonstrator terrain relative navigation system, developed by the European Space Agency. However, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, ESA announced its decision in April to discontinue cooperation on Russia's Luna series of robotic moon missions. Now Pilot D will not be a part of the Luna 25 mission. While the Luna 26 and Luna 27, which were earlier scheduled to launch in 2024 and 2025, respectively, will also be postponed, announced Chief of Roscosmos, Dmitry Rogozin, shortly after ESA discontinued its cooperation. Following the completion of the first phase in 2025, which may get delayed considering the possible postponement of Luna 26 and Luna 27, Phase 2 called the Construction Phase, will begin in 2026, and this is supposed to go on till 2035. The construction phase will be divided into two substages, the initial one from 2026 to 2030, which will involve technology verification, sample return, massive cargo delivery, and the start of joint operations. Two missions are planned during this period, the Chinese CE-8 and the Russian Luna 28. Stage 2 of the second phase will take place from 2030 to 2035 and involve completing the in-orbit and lunar surface infrastructure for energy, communication, actual resource utilization, and other technologies. Five joint missions are planned for this substage, named ILRS-1 through 5 and Russian Super Heavy Lift Launch Vehicles are listed to launch the mission. Phase 3 will see the start of crewed landings after 2036, when the ILRS has been mostly completed and humans can conduct research and exploration. Okay, that's all for today, we will see you in the next video.